there, Lindsay here. Today I want to talk about places you can find reference images for your artwork because I get asked a lot about that. Um, the Probably the first and best place to get references for your artwork or reference photos is to take them yourself. So um, nowadays we have, most of us have phones that are with us all the time that have a camera on them. Even some of the older phones that aren't even smartphones have cameras on them and you can transfer those photos onto your computer using a cable or using a little SD card. So I would suggest when you are inspired by something, maybe you are going for your evening walk and there's a gorgeous sunset, or you're inspired by a plant that you see, or some clouds, or a building, snap a photo. That's going to be great because not only do you have the picture to go by on your phone to reference, you can remember what it felt like to see it, why it inspired you. Um, you're going to remember a lot more details, and then the, the photo that you take take is going to help enhance that. You're going to remember the scale of it, the size of it, the color of it, the way the light played on it. Um, and by working from your own reference photos, it will help you take better reference photos and um, it'll help your memory too because if you know you're taking a photo because you might want to paint it someday, you're going to be a little bit more observant as you take those photos. So that would be the number one place to get your reference photos. But it's not always practical to work only from your own photos. Maybe you want to paint a scene that um, you don't have the opportunity to photograph or maybe you want to paint um, an animal and your photography skills just are not good enough to capture a photograph of an animal that you want to paint. So relying on reference photos that other people take can be a good option. So I see a lot of people on, especially younger artists on Instagram, say um, this reference photo was from, from Pinterest or this reference photo was from Google. And that is not the best place to get your reference photos. You want to make sure when you get a reference photo for your artwork that you are using a photograph that the photographer has given permission to use. So that means either contacting the, photogra the photographer of a picture that you want to use or using it from a reputable commercial use website. Now there are several sites that I use a lot that are free that have works that have been um, that are copyright free or the, the photographer has given copy given people permission to use the photographs and that's what you want. My favorite two websites for this are are unsplash.com and pexels.com and the reason I like those two is because it seems like the photos on there are very reliably um, copyright free or they have their commercial use allowed that's the cop they still the copyright still retains to the phot photographer but it's commercial use allowed so anybody can use it and some are even released into the public domain but the thing I like about those two websites in particular is that they have a collections feature. So if you log on, you make an account, you can actually save photos for later. Because sometimes I'm just being lazy. It might be late, you know, late in the evening. I'm watching TV, but I'm not really engaged in the show. And I'm just kind of scrolling around for inspiration or planning tutorials. And, um, and I'll just want to sort out things like, oh, that's, I'll put like, pictures of flowers that inspire me in the flower photo, or pictures that um, of glass in my glass photo. I can organize different things by media I might want to paint it in, or by the type of subject it is, or sometimes it's just like, this is a funky concept I want to paint. I actually have a, a collection called Funky Concepts I'd Like to Paint. And I can just kind of pull different ideas together that way. And then I can go back, because otherwise I may not remember that I saw a photo that I liked before, and trying to bookmark everything can get a little overwhelming to keep track of. So I like those two websites for that. There's a couple other websites that have really good um, commercial free or commercial use photos and that would be uh, Pixabay and I just found one called Pixhere, P-X-H-E-R-E and I'm going to link everything down below in the video description so you can find it and you can uh, check those out for yourself. Um, but I'm not that familiar with Pixhere. I just found it because um, I was trying to find a reference photo that I had downloaded from one of the big two sites and I just could not find it. I didn't put it in a collection, I guess, um, and I couldn't find it, and it was on that Pix Here site. Um, now, the downside to this is that because these websites offer these commercial use photos for free, other people are using them too. Now, generally, the people using these sites are like web designers, bloggers, um, people that just need contact uh, content for brochures and things like that. So generally, it's not other artists, but there has been several occasions where other artists on YouTube have done... Uh, demonstrations using the exact same photos I have. Um, and so then, you know, some of your viewers might think, well, is she copying her or is is that person copying her? You know, and you just kind of wonder if, you know, it, people could think that you're just copying other artists when you just both, have, both were inspired by the same reference photo on the same free reference photo site. So 
said is that sometimes photos get uploaded that shouldn't be uploaded. So there could be someone that's just uploading artwork, they, uh, photographs they like that they do not take themselves and they do not have the permission to use. So that is, uh, that there's the chance of that, like that you um, accidentally infringe on copyright because you were told this is a copyright free or this photo is released in the public domain or it's a commercial, uh, Creative Commons free to use photo and it really isn't, it's been stolen. So, you know, that is something you have to be aware of. Um, so those would be the downsides of using these websites. Now there's another source for images, reference images, that can be quite helpful because they're generally taken by other artists and shared with other artists. Uh, these would be like peer-to-peer -peer shared reference photos. Um, there's a website called Paint My Photo. I used to use a lot, but um, I was having trouble upload. You Once you use the photo from there, you're supposed to also upload your artwork to their gallery and link back to the reference photo, which is completely understandable and uh, definitely a reasonable thing to ask, but I had some issues trying to get my work uploaded uh, for some reason, and then I got in trouble for not uploading because it was kind of a hassle to upload. I don't know what was going on. Maybe it was just a certain time on that website. And then I said, you know, I don't want to keep track of all these different rules, so I decided not to use that site anymore, but it's definitely out there. It's a, it's a great resource, especially if you want to be inspired by other people's artwork. You do get uh, quite a few amateur photos, amateurish photos up there because they're not professional photographers. And the reason these um, these other commercial use sites are, are out there and the photos are so good is because those photographers are advertising their photos for sale. So most of these websites are sponsored by like um, Adobe Stock or Graphic Stock or Shutterstock or those big paid for subscription sites. So if you search for something and uh, you don't like the options that are there for free, you might like something that's a paid photo and then you could subscribe to one of these paid sites and that's what they're hoping for and that's why those sites are there for free. So um, so that, that totally makes sense and that's a great option as well and that's why there's some there's those nice big sites available because they are advertisements for the paid sites. Um, so these peer-to-peer -peer sharing sites have different rules. There's a lot of Facebook groups that um, are like photos for artists or botanical photos or wildlife photos and um, you need to make sure that you read the terms of use of these sharing websites and that you comply and that you link back to the photographer or tag them or um, put a credit wherever you showcase the work if that's required. So you just need to make sure wherever you're using photos from that you comply with the terms of use so you don't get in trouble down the road. You don't want to be, you know, having a book publisher come to you and say, I really want to use that photo, uh, that, that uh, painting of yours of a rose and you submit it but you forget that you got that on a peer-to-peer -peer sharing site and you forget to link or put a photographer credit there and it gets published in a book and then, you know, the photographer gets upset with you and, you know, could bring litigation against you if you don't follow their rules. So you want to make sure that wherever you get your photos, you're sure you're all right to use them and that um, you comply with any attribution that they might require in order to use those photos. So that's the that's the uh, the main thing you want to pay attention to. So just grabbing a photo off Pinterest or off Google search is not a good idea, especially, I mean, if you're just sketching in your own sketchbook and you're never going to show it, you're never going to take a picture of it and post it on your Facebook, your Instagram, or do a YouTube video demonstration of it, then you're fine. But if you think you might spend a lot of time on this and you're probably going to be real proud of it and you don't want to share it or maybe display it or put it in a gallery or have prints made, you want to make sure that the time that you put into the artwork it does not go to waste because you have permission to use the photograph that you're using if you're using someone else's photograph. So that's pretty much all I wanted to, to say here. Another thing to avoid having work that looks like anybody else might use that reference photo one thing you can do is pull from several different reference photos and make a new composition. And that is really the ideal way to use your reference photos because um, then you are creating something completely new from information that you found you know, around these different websites, or you can even combine it with photos that you've taken yourself. Like you may want to paint a portrait of your pet. So you get a picture of your pet, but you didn't maybe get a really great detailed photo. Your camera's not that great. You're just not a very talented photographer. I'm not a talented photographer. So I might go and find other similar reference photos of cats or dogs online that's going to give me better details. So like when I'm painting the fur, I can look in, I can get where I want a different gesture or something like that. I can pull from these different sources and get something that's completely transformative and unique because you really want your work to be kind of unique and transformative um, if you are doing it for your own artistic purposes. For doing a tutorial, it's often really good to have a reference photo that's 
exactly the way I want it and they can follow right along with me and then they can paint it um, and look back at the picture and have that guide as well as a demonstration guide. So I do rely a lot on these, uh, these copyright um, commercial use websites to use for my tutorials because I know that my viewers are going to get a really good photograph to look at and they don't have to fill in so many gaps. So uh, that's why I tend to do that quite a bit. Um, so if you have any questions, oh my cat just came down. Speaking of cats, you said we were talking about me. You want to pay my picture because I'm... Come here, Tal. You want to see her? You want to see Tally? Come here. Oh yeah, you're my precious little one. This is my precious Tally cat. Hello. She's probably hiding from the dog. Is that so? Um, well, that's all I wanted to say today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Check out the video description for links to the websites I mentioned. And till next time, happy crafting, crafting, happy painting, happy creating. Big blanket statement. We'll see you later. Bye.